Tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise, exclusively on OC16. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching. Coconut trees and musical artists are the stars of this episode of Painting in Paradise. First, we'll learn about the iconic coconut tree, as well as some tips on how to draw and paint them. Then we're off to San Diego for an art class with some of Hawaii's favorite recording artists. Join Jerry Santos, Kavika Kahiapo, and Kawai Kapu Okalani Hewitt on a musical edition of Painting in Paradise. What tree comes to mind when you think about Hawaii? Coconut trees. Coconut tree. Coconut. Coconuts. Coconut tree. Pineapple tree? Eh. The Hawaiian name for coconut is new. It was an important plant in Hawaii, and one tradition was that when a child was born, a coconut tree was planted for the child to ensure that they had food and shelter throughout their lives. Many coconut trees that we see in public places are trimmed so that the nuts and loose branches don't fall on people. An untrimmed tree will be loaded with nuts that are either green or orange in color. Now get your pencils and paper and pens and whatever you want to color with, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw and paint the coconut tree. Many visitors come to Hawaii and are so surprised at how vibrant our colors are. It's like a veil of gray that's been lifted and people bring the colors of their homeland to Hawaii when painting Hawaii and oftentimes those colors aren't quite the colors we have here. For example, evergreens are prevalent in North America and so people use a lot of viridians whereas Hawaii has more olive greens like sap greens and so those are the colors you want to use when painting Hawaiian foliage. And that's our art tip for today. I'm Patrick Ching. Come and meet me at Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center. Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honwen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse, Patrick Ching Art in the Princeville Center, or online at patrickchingart.com. Today I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a coconut tree. Now a coconut tree, or a coconut palm, actually has some leaves that actually face right at you like that, you know? A lot of people don't draw those. But when I do draw a coconut tree, I like to draw those little leaves first, the ones facing right at you. So here's how I go about doing it. First of all, I decide where I want my coconut tree to explode from, okay? There's a little point on the tree. I'll say I want my coconut tree to kind of explode. In other words, all the leaves burst out like a 4th of July fireworks. And that'll happen right around here, okay? So right there's where I'm gonna put one of those leaves that are facing right at you. Okay, and I'm gonna make it kind of like a triangle shape like that with some leaves. Now you'll be using a pencil for this or I'm using a pen just so you can see it a little better. But right there, I just did one of those leaves that point right at the viewer. After that, I'm gonna take a line here and draw where I want my trunk to go. And of course, this trunk is thinner up top and it gets a little thicker as it gets down below, okay? So there's my trunk, there's where my tree explodes from. And now I'm gonna do the mid-ribs. The mid-ribs, just imagine a 4th of July fireworks. They're gonna go okay? And this is gonna tell you and the viewer just how long your coconut fronds are. With each one of these, I might go and give it a little meat 
Give it a little meat. Okay, so these are the mid ribs. Okay, I'm making them a little thicker at the base, a little thinner at the point. Look at that. Looks like the 4th of July already. Okay, so with each one of these fronds, I have a choice, and I want you to observe coconut trees and their fronds and see which part all the individual little slivers hang down from. You could make a frond that has them all on one side like this, or you could choose to put some fronds on the other side, some leaves. Okay, so that's your choice. I'll make some on the other side there, and I'll make some a little more on that side. Maybe this front, I'll just have them hanging off of one side right here, okay? Maybe that top one I'll get going on two sides. Okay, and one more like that. And there's my little explosion of coconut fronds. As I go down, I'm going to give the tree trunk a little zigzag. Just kind of rock back and forth with your hand. Like little triangles going all the way down the tree. They don't have to quite touch each other. Just use the curve of your hand. Let it rock like that. And we'll say this coconut tree is kind of on a little little grassy knoll like that, okay? Maybe he's going right down onto the beach over there. Now there's one more thing in this coconut tree. If it is an intact coconut tree, it hasn't been like, you know, <coughs> um, cut. Uh, you're going to have coconuts. And we can put those right around here, okay? Make the viewer believe that these fronds are in front of it and you can just vaguely see some of those coconuts back there. You can do a little bit of coconut flowers up top here. There's usually kind of little sprigs of yellow. And I just outlined my coconut tree. And now that I'm looking at my coconut tree, I think I can use maybe one more frond right around there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and put them in there. I'm doing the leaves over here. A lot of times when you're going to paint these fronds that are low, they're kind of in the shadow. Just keep that in mind. Now that I've got the shape of my coconut tree and I'm pretty happy with everything falls, especially that little leaf that faces right at the viewer, I'm going to go get a, a bigger pen. You can get a pen now and do these outlines. I use a Sharpie or a little big pen. So now that I've got my coconut tree pretty much where I want it, I'm gonna give those outlines a little more emphasis using a little bigger pen. I'll use a Sharpie, and again, I'll start first with those fronds that are facing right at you. So that's in front, nothing gets in front of that, okay? And when I'm drawing these coconut trees and leaves and fronds. I'm doing the ones that are in front first. The coconuts. Okay, so I'm just kind of retracing them, reinforcing some of the lines and the midribs, the shape of the leaves, the midribs. And of course the trunk. Now remember to make these trunks pretty thin up top. You can easily make them bigger as they go down below. Okay, and again, we'll have this coconut tree kind of resting on a little berm over here, maybe some grass. 
Okay. Now's a good chance for me to do some shading. And there's some fun things to do while shading your coconut trees. First of all, the fronds or the leaves, you can give some shading to. This one down below, I'm gonna give it a pretty much total dark shading. You can do a little bit in those coconuts. Let's make this frond stand out, this one that's in front of everything. Okay, so where you decide to shade, it's pretty important in these coconut trees. Okay, and your coconut trees are gonna come out as good as your experience with coconut trees is. That means it depends on how much time you spend actually studying, looking at coconut trees, figuring out why they look the way they look. Okay, now I'm gonna decide where my light's coming from. I'm gonna say my light's coming from up here and you can go ahead and draw a little sun if you want. Okay, we know where our light's coming from. It's coming from up there, going down this way. So I'm actually gonna shade the trunk of the coconut tree and I'm going to shade it almost all on the right side in other words a side not getting hit by the sun okay up here usually gets shaded a lot more you can do the whole top part kind of shaded for you advanced drawers out there, you can get it darkest, not to the very edge, but almost to the very edge, can get really dark. That way it has a little bit of reflected light over here. Looks like a little glow. Okay, so again, the shading can happen almost to the right side, but not totally to the right side. Also, if you wanna go and shade a little bit inside of these, these little nodules there. You can give a few horizontal strokes like that. That's pretty fun. Maybe every other one, huh? Okay. It's pretty nice for a coconut trunk. Now there's one more shadow that I'd like to include in here and that is the cast shadow. The shadow that is cast from the light hitting the coconut tree. And let's say we're at the beach and you have a sandy area right here. When you make the shape of the coconut tree, it's not gonna be just perfectly round. It's gonna be sitting on some flat earth over here. So keep that in consideration when you're making the shape of your coconut shadow. And it can come right up here, okay? So there's a pretty good shape for the sun hitting it at that angle. We'll get to shade this coconut tree it goes down the sand over here if you get these shadows of the palm tree or the coconut tree at the right angle you can make really impressive drawings and paintings can put some dots in there you know so you know it's the sand there we'll put some dots don't forget your signature and there you have it the coconut tree here's a couple of art tips for painting coconut trees Painting these swaying palms is not as easy as it seems. I like to paint the palms in a dark silhouette first, and when that dries, I repaint them again with their actual colors. Many people try to paint every single leaf on each frond. I think it looks way better to give the frond some bulk first, and then pull some points out of the bulky fronds. The coolest fronds are the ones facing right at you. They reflect the most light toward you and are usually the brightest colors.
When we return, we'll join some of our favorite musical artists in a San Diego painting class. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching. If you want to become a really good painter and do it quickly, let me teach you with my Painting Nature DVD. This two DVD set contains my most important artistic insights and all the techniques I use to create my most intricate paintings. In the first DVD, you'll see how I do a fairly complex painting from start to finish. In the second DVD, you can sit in on one of my painting workshops. Beginners as well as professionals can benefit from these lessons. My Painting Nature DVD is the best investment I can think of for anyone who wants to dramatically increase their artistic skills or even become a professional. It's just changed my life. I didn't know I loved to paint until I actually took my first class. Patrick is such a wonderful teacher. It's real fun, really. I advise anyone to ever do it. Just once in the life, right? You're an amazing artist, even if you don't know it yet. I can't wait to help you bring out your best on canvas. You can get my Painting Nature DVD at Patrick Ching Art Gallery in the Princeville Center or online at patrickchingart.com. One of the most spectacular things an artist can paint are sunsets. They're also one of the most difficult. Sunsets place opposite or complementary colors against each other, causing an exciting feast for the eyes. Sunset colors change like a rainbow, moving from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, then purple. One hint when starting a sunset sky is to fade from a very light blue to a darker blue purple. Then paint in your yellowish orange glow so that you don't mix the orange directly into the blue which would turn your sky brown. On a recent trip to San Diego, I was joined by musicians Jerry Santos, Kavika Kahiapo, and Kavai Kapu Okalani Hewitt, just before their concert at the California Center for the Arts. Our host, Kelly Haupu, let us use their hula halau at These Islands Gift Shops in Escondido to hold a nature painting workshop with my musical heroes. It was nice to work with such talented people who already had a great rapport with their hands. The kind of art class I like. <laughs> BYOM. Bring your own music. <laughs> that would be a lot simpler than all my work. Just, you do just this. Do that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't orchestrate this, so we this have a, a variety. Though. Is this good yeah. enough? Oh, yeah, perfect. But I remember you used to tell me stories about the peaks of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, you came in doing Oklahoma. Oh, I know that. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it's what you would like to take home with you. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. <laughs> what I'd like to take home with you is my reputation intact. <laughs> Up here, not back here, oh. and not on top. All the efficiency happens. So am I supposed to mix it? Yeah, we're going to mix these two colors to become one color. The primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, are where color starts. Can't mix anything to get red, can't mix anything to get blue, can't mix anything to get yellow. However, if you do put yellow and red together, you get what everybody? Da -da 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 -da. Orange, right. Yellow and blue makes da -da 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 green, and blue and red makes da -da 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 purple. Yes, so right here, is the color wheel of life. Start with the white and, and just paint within these circles. Probably use all that paint about like that. Okay, just give it a thin coat of white in those two circles. Two colors of sky. Have you make it anyway? The sky is going to have 
put a bit more CO2. All right, this is a dream come true today. You can carry, you know, your music equipment and slough around all your paintings. <laughs> the background is gonna keep gradual fades, so that when we make sharp lines for the foreground, we lead the viewer through our painting. The way you want. Not just like this. Just do the rest of the way up and stop about here. Giving it a thin coat on everything except you know the bird that we want to keep white. And then after that we can paint into this green with a dark black. So basically we're going there, we're gonna go around. Okay, so everything else we're gonna paint a thin coat of this right here. Oh, follow behind my fifth grade intermediate class Yeah, make it like a blur. Later on, before we finish, I'm gonna get a big brush. And we're gonna just kind of go like that. It's gonna make it all like a blur, like a canvas. So right now I have all this dark paint in my brush. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start coming down the canvas now. Still with the cross strokes? Yeah. And I go kind of in a little S shape. When I do another layer, I'm reaching up into the previous one, pulling paint down. Down into the layer. Yeah. yeah. And as I go down the canvas, I'm going to lose more of the dark color paint, pick up more of the light color. Yeah. The lower part? Yeah. Softly, good, good. That's even better what you just did, tilting the back end down. Uh -huh. Good. more up like this and a little harder press. Start from the bottom and just go up slowly like a little bit with every right back and forth, yeah. Great. With this amount of effort. So we're gonna you know, that's, that, right? that's what looks beautiful. Also if you don't have a if you have a place that's not perfect, there's a line or something, it's also a good place to put a cloud. Um, gotta put it on the hot setting. If you feel it on a cold setting it won't dry this paint. This paint right is that a regular hair dryer? There's a place that I come from on the east side of paradise Where blue meets blue and the ocean and sky become one Where the mountains and the sea they call out to me We look at what we have and what we want to get. Um, we're going to start building the lighter and lighter greens. Okay, we got a good foundation. We got a couple dark greens down there, and we'll start to build some lighter greens. And then after that, you can start pulling points out of that bulk with okay. a little brush like that. Awesome. That's a little bit more yellow. Yeah. Big mahalo again to Patrick Ching. This is about my third session with him in the past couple of years, but uh, hanging out here in these island store in San Diego, Escondido, California. Yeah. Well, I was very um, worried about participating in a painting program, having never touched paints or a brush. Patrick just made this so much fun. And uh, 
you can learn a whole lot in a short period of time. And uh, this is a mountain I'm very familiar with, having been in front of it almost every day for many, many years. And I'm just surprised that I was able to paint a mountain. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Kawai Kapo Okalani Hewitt. And uh, today, um, I had a lesson from Patrick Ching on oil painting. And this is the first ever oil painting that I've ever attempted and I found it kind of uh, fascinating in one sense. Of course, you have to be very focused and pay attention to a lot of details in the painting. And I'm gonna treasure it for the rest of my life. So mahalo anui loa, thank you very, very much. Well, I had a great time in San Diego painting with my hero musicians, and I hope you had a good time watching us. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I'd love to see pictures of your art. So email it to patrick at paintinginparadise.tv Aloha!